In this video we're going to talk about dividing polynomials using long division. But before we talk about dividing polynomials, let's just recall the long division uh, that we learned way back in elementary school. So suppose we wanted to do something like divide 426, do 426 divided by 5. Okay, how do we do 426 divided by 5? Well, we could do it using long division. So we put 426 here in our division symbol with 5. Then we ask, how many times does 5 go into 4? Well, it doesn't. So then we say, how many times does 5 go into 42? Well, it's 8 times. Right, and 8 times 5 is 40. Okay, and then we subtract, right? 42 minus 40 is, 20, is 2. And then we bring down the 6, right? So we have 26. And then how many times does 5 go into 26? Well, it goes in 5 times. And then 5 times 5 is 25. And then we have a remainder of 1. Sometimes people put R1. But really what this means is we have 85 plus 1 fifth. Or sometimes you could, you could just write it as a mixed fraction. 85 and 1 fifth, or 85.2. Now, what does it mean to say that 85.2 is the answer? Well, it means that if you do 85.2 times 5, you'll end up getting 426. Okay, well, that's just a uh, long division of numbers. How do we uh, divide polynomials? Okay, how do we do x squared minus 2x minus 35 divided by x minus 7? Okay, well, we're going to use the same technique. So in, in this video, we're going to talk about long division. We'll do long division in another video. Uh, we'll talk about synthetic division, which is kind of a quick, streamlined way of doing long division. Okay, well, uh, what we have to do is, first of all, we put the x minus 7 out here. We have to ask, how many times does x, so we just look at the leading coefficient here, x, and the leading coefficient here is x squared. How many times does x go into x squared? Or in other words, what times x gives you x squared? Well, of course, it's x, right? x times x gives you x squared. So let's do x times x minus 7. We get x squared minus 7x. So just like when we were doing the long division, uh, with numbers, we have to multiply x times x minus 7. Now we're going to subtract the whole thing. Now, uh, what we should do probably though is put this in parentheses because we're going to have x squared minus x squared, that goes away. But then we, we want to do minus 2x and then it's really minus a negative 7x. That's like plus 7x. So that would be 5x. So if you didn't put this in parentheses, you might think, oh, we need to do negative 2x plus negative 7x is negative 9x, but that's, that's not correct. Okay, now we also need to bring down the negative 35. And now again, we look at the leading coefficients here, the x and the 5x. How many times does x go into 5x? Or what times x gives you 5x? So we can put plus 5. Okay, and 5 times 5x minus 7 is 5x minus 35. And notice we have a remainder of 0. Okay, well, the fact that we have a remainder of 0, what that really tells us is that uh, x minus 7 is actually a factor of x squared minus 2x minus 35. Uh, so what does it mean, by the way, to say that our answer is x plus 5? Well, one way we could check our answer is if we do x plus 5 times x minus 7, we should end up getting... Uh, x squared minus 2x minus 35. And if you FOIL this out, you'll see that you actually do get this. So notice, I kind of rigged this problem up initially to be uh, kind of nice, because x minus 7 is actually a factor of this. Okay, so we didn't get a remainder at all. Okay, but what if I had changed this? Instead of being x minus 7, what if this had been, say, x minus 9? Okay, divide x squared minus 2x minus 35 by x minus 9. Well, that's exactly the problem that we have here. And uh, notice, uh, in, in this case, we're going to get a non-zero re remainder because x minus 9 is not actually a factor of uh, this original polynomial. So we'll see that. Now again, the question we ask here first is how many times does x go into x squared? Well, it's x times, right? x times x is x squared. And then x times minus 9 is minus 9x. Okay, but remember, we're subtracting here. And so the x squared minus x squared goes away. We have negative 2x really plus 9x because minus negative 9x. And then we bring down, uh, so we get 7x, and then we bring down the minus 35. Now what times x gives you 7x? Well, it's 7. Okay, and then 7 times x minus 9 is going to give us 7x minus 63. Okay, and so we're subtracting this. So what we have is uh, 7x minus 7x, that goes away. That should always go, go, go away if you uh, did this correctly. But then, uh, the, just like the x squared minus x squared went away. But notice negative 35, and then it's going to be plus 63, uh, because negative negative 63 is, I think, 28. Okay, and so what this means is that at the end here, we're going to put plus 28 over 
x minus 9. So this is our solution. Okay, when we say what is x squared minus 2x minus 35 divided by x minus 9, it's x plus 7 plus 28 over our x minus 9. Okay, so we had a remainder of 28. Okay, so notice the x minus 9 is not actually a factor of x squared minus 2x minus 5. Okay, because we got a non-zero remainder. Okay, now in this uh, problem we have a cubic polynomial, negative 8x cubed plus 5x squared minus 10x plus 3. We want to divide this by x plus 1. So let's write our negative 8x cubed plus 5x squared minus 10x plus 3. And we're going to divide this by x plus 1. So this time we have to say what times x gives you minus 8x cubed and it's minus 8x squared. Okay, and minus 8x squared times x gives you the minus 8x cubed again. And then we do minus 8x squared times plus 1, that would be minus, uh, minus 8x squared. Okay, and, then, and we're going to subtract this whole thing. And notice the negative 8x cubed minus another negative 8x cubed is like plus 8x cubed, and that goes away. That should always go away, that first term, if you did it correctly. Now we have 5x squared minus a negative 8x squared, that's like plus 8x squared, that gives us 13x squared. Now this time we bring down the minus 10x, and we're not going to bring down the plus 3 yet. But then we say what times x gives us 13x squared, and it's 13x. Okay, now 13x times x plus 1 is 13x squared plus 13x. And if we subtract, uh, notice what we get is uh, uh, we have a negative 10x minus a, a 13x. That would be a negative 23x. This time we bring down the 3. And now we ask what times x gives us minus 23x? Well, it's minus 23. Okay, so minus 23 times x plus 1 is going to be minus 23x minus 23. And we're subtracting here, so again, the 23x's go away. And we have 3 minus a negative 23, that's like 3 plus 23, that gives us 26. So notice we have a remainder of 26. We can write this as plus 26 over x plus 1. So this is our final answer. When we divide that original polynomial, that cubic polynomial, by x plus 1, this is what we get. Okay, and so what does this tell us? So this tells us that x plus 1 is not a factor of the original polynomial. If we, if we had taken the original polynomial and tried to factor it, would x plus 1 have been one of those factors? No, because when we divide by x uh, plus 1, we don't get a remainder of 0. We get a remainder of 26. Okay, now also we could check our answer by taking this whole thing and multiplying it by x plus 1, and it'd be kind of messy, it'd take a little bit of time to, to do it, but if you did multiply this whole thing by x plus 1, you should end up getting that original polynomial. Okay, let's do one more. Uh, this one is going to be a fourth degree polynomial. And I want to illustrate uh, something with, with this polynomial. First of all, notice we have x to the fourth plus 3x squared, but it's missing the x cubed term. So we have to write plus 0x cubed plus 3x squared plus 0x minus 8. Okay, so if it's missing a term, you have to put it in there with a 0. And we're dividing by x squared minus 2x plus 1. So this time we have our leading term out front is x, x squared, and we have to ask what times x squared gives us x to the fourth? Well, x squared times x squared gives us x to the fourth. Notice I'm putting it over here. We want to put all of our like terms in the same columns. Uh, so now we do x squared times this whole thing. Well, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times minus 2x is minus 2x cubed. And x squared times 1 is just x squared. Okay, and we're going to subtract x to the fourth minus x to the fourth, that goes away. That should always go, go away. We have a minus 2x cubed here, but notice there's another negative in front of it. So 0x cubed plus 2x cubed is 2x cubed. And we have a 3x squared minus an x squared that gives us a 2x squared. Okay, and this time we bring down the z uh, 0x. Okay, we don't bring down the minus 8 yet. Okay, now we have to ask what times x squared gives us 2x cubed, and notice it's 2x. Okay, 2x times x squared gives us 2x cubed, and 2x times minus 2x is minus 4x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Okay, and when we subtract, the 2x cubes go away like they should. We have a 2x squared minus a minus 4x squared is plus 4x squared, so that gives us 6x squared. And then we have a minus 2x here, 0x minus 2x. And finally, we bring down the uh, minus 8. So what times x squared gives us 6x squared? Well, it's just 6. OK, 
Okay, six times uh, this uh, term out front here is uh, this uh, polynomial out front is 6x squared minus 12x plus 6. And when we subtract, notice we're not just going to get a number. What we end up getting is, I believe it'll be 10x because negative 2x plus 12x. And then also negative 8 minus 6 would be minus 14. So this time our remainder is not just a constant, it's 10x minus 14. So we put 10x minus 14 over x squared minus 2x plus 1. So this whole thing, that's our answer when we divide this by this. Okay, now one of the things that's a little bit frustrating about long division is that if you make one mistake kind of early on, it, it goofs everything else up. Um, so that definitely is a little bit frustrating. So you have to be a little bit careful, particularly with these negative signs when you're when you're subtracting things. Uh, it's it's easy to sometimes add things. And when we do synthetic division, which is a kind of a quick streamlined way of doing this process, you do end up adding things, and so uh, it can be a little bit confusing.